God bless. Children's Day. We thank God that in this church, a day is set to honor the children in the house. My text is Psalm 127, 3 to 5. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. And the topic that I want to, us to dwell on tonight is children are a blessing from the Lord. Children, a blessing from the Lord. Do we have any parents in the house? Amen. Parenting in the 21st century is more complicated than it has ever been. I remember when we were growing up, the moment you can walk and you can talk, your parents can even leave you with a neighbor and go to the market. Is it not true? You can leave your child with somebody and say, oh, I'll be back, and you stay for another two, three hours. It's fine. There were a lot of things that we were so ignorant of. You just eat, you play with your friends. There's no computer, no internet, nothing. Whatever is happening next door, you are not aware. Except the things that your parents would teach you in the house. And at school, of course. You go to school. You do the Lord's Prayer. On Wednesdays, it's Bible studies. They teach us something from the Word. But parenting in this 21st century is more complicated than it has ever been. Due to the 24-7 technology. Marriages falling apart. We are in a very corrupt culture. And there are a lot of challenges that parents are facing. Today, over 101 million single parent homes are responsible for 320 million children globally. This shows the many kids who do not live with mom and, mom and dad. And therefore, raising a child is difficult, whether it is even single or parents' home, especially with this tough economic condition. Therefore, some people have decided not to have kids. But remember, the Bible said, you shall multiply, right? Be fruitful. So it's biblical. You realize that about 21% of high school students admit drug abuse. This is scary. 21% of high school students. And about 41 report drinking alcohol. When we were growing up, I, I never even tasted beer, beer before. I didn't even know how it tasted. It is sad to know that certain drugs have even been legalized in this country. And you can eat it in candies, in cookies, in snacks. If you want to purchase it, you can order it like you ordering pizza. It's legalized. What is the enemy aiming at after our children? That you mess them up before they grow up, but thanks be to God for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Children are growing up too fast. And what do I mean by that? Let me explain. There was a time when kids enjoyed being kids. Today, 
Even at the earliest age, some children are partaking in adults' activities with serious consequences. And they bear a burden of responsibility for their family. TJ, teenage pregnancies are on the rise. How can a child give birth to a child? One day we traveled and we went to a certain country. And I saw this young girl, small, carrying a baby. I thought it's their sister. And I was shocked to hear that that little girl had a child and that was the second one. Children are giving birth to children. And this makes life very, very difficult. There are violence in schools. And remember that the school plays a major part in our children and is the foundation of building their lives. And therefore, such a hostile environment makes life very, very challenging. Some schools are like war zone. They are shootings so often. And some schools have become a marketplace for drugs. And that is the challenges that we are facing. Stress and time management is another challenge facing the young people today. Managing the pressure to succeed in every area of your life and finding time to do it all seems to be one of the biggest challenges. Because young people are not expected to be successful. They are expected to be successful, yet few of them are aware of effective time management. If they want to be successful, if they are supposed to be successful, then they have to consider time management. And yet most of them are not even aware of it. Have you realized that most of our young people spend so much time on the internet? And sometimes you don't even know what they are watching. And that some of the things they are watching are not even helpful. Political and social issues is another struggle to our children. The problem is to differentiate between good and evil is a challenge. Sometimes I don't know which is good, which is evil. One time I went to Dallas, I went to the store, and I was getting something to buy. And they told me that the store was closing. So I was rushing to buy and leave. And I, I had one of the workers live in the workplace. And then somebody said, bye, Christine. And the person goes, bye. And I was wondering, is that a girl or a boy? But when I saw the dressing and even the heel that the person was wearing, I knew that it wasn't a girl. So sometimes these are the things that confuses our children. And they don't know where to turn. Whether they should remain boys or girls. And vice versa. And the list goes on. With all the challenges facing our children today, and with parents raising their children in an untamed society or environment, most of them conclude that raising kids are too burdensome. It's too hard instead of saying that it's a blessing. But the Bible is full of principles that can help us become effective parents. For it is a blessing to have children and it's not a burden. It's not a burden. Because we are partners with God. If you become a partner with God, then raising a child will not be a burden. Your child or children are not making you happy because they're going through challenges. But remember that is a transition that they're going through. They're, growing, they're going through growing pain. But I want to assure you that there's hope. Amen? God will give you the grace and God will help you to raise them up. 
there is hope. Mark chapter 10 and verse 13. Let's read a scripture from there. Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Jesus went about ministering to people. He was healing the sick. He was casting out devils. He was preaching, teaching them about the word. And one day, whilst he was teaching, that some mothers brought their children. And then, when they brought the kids, the disciples or the leaders said, why are you bringing these children? This is not the time for you to bring the children. And Jesus wasn't pleased. But the Bible says, Jesus said to them, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. The Bible said, Jesus took them in his arm and he laid hands on them and he blessed them. The disciples thought that that wasn't the place for the kids at that time. The parents have brought their children to Jesus for Jesus to bless them. And the di- disciples rebuked them. Don't bring your children to the master and disturb him. He's ministering to adults. This is not the place for children. He does not have time for these noisy children. Do you know that when kids get to a certain stage, when the place is quiet, that's why they make noise. Those are few parents, you, I think you can identify with it. You can put them in the nursery, they'll be quiet playing with their toys. The moment you bring them to the center, ah, la, 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 la. then they start preaching with the preacher. So I guess when they took their children there, the disciples said, no, 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 don't disturb. He's ministering to adults. He does not time, have time for these naughty ch- children. He should have left them home for their older siblings to take care of them, even their grandparents to babysit. Does it identify with yours? When you are coming, oh, stay home, I'll be back. Can you identify with that? Because getting up, dressing, and leaving is faster than dressing five, four kids. I know how it is. So the disciple maybe have said, you should have left them home for their siblings to take care of them. You should have left them home and let grandma handle them. You should have brought these kids here. But the Bible says when Jesus saw or when he heard, he was greatly displeased and rebuked the disciples. So that is the reason why it is so important for us to make sure that we bring our case to God's house. Since after the pandemic, most people leave their case home. Why is the place so quiet? Am I telling the truth? We leave the children home. It's not important. After all, they won't hear anything. We leave them home. Whether they are babies or they are preteens or they are teens, we leave them home. And it's so sad that after we've left them home and they are so accustomed to staying home, we come to God and cry that we should save them. Jesus wasn't pleased. And he rebuked them. He said, no, no, don't do that. Bring the children for such is the kingdom. Brethren, we ought to have time for the children. We have to look for their interest. Have you realized that whatever you do for maybe a week, 
or two or three a month or two you become so used to that is the reason why it is even so important for everybody to come back to church because they are used to it you don't need to shower if you want to shower in the night you don't need to shower at five o'clock and dress up and come to church they become used to staying home now you don't need to drive through this traffic and come to church after all you are hearing me online so what is the use of me coming to church I'm also in church at home. So if we leave these kids at home for a year or for two, it will be so difficult to bring them to the house. As much as we appreciate everybody online, it is not the same in the sanctuary as at home. Is it true? When the worship is going on, do you get up in your own living room? God is, do you get up and dance? You watch people worshiping. But if you are here, you worship with us. Is it not so? So it's not the same. The anointing, sometimes the anointing, last, time, last Friday when we came to the all night, it was so short, but I really enjoyed it. I was saying to the devil, the time has come, and I remembered all the money that the enemy has used people to steal from me. I said, I'm taking everything back. Because it makes a whole lot of difference. We've left the kids home for two years now. Already they're facing challenges in their lives. Of coming back to the house of God will be another challenge. When they took the kids to Jesus, he embraced them. He said, leave them and let them come to me. Ministering to children is so important to the Lord. The nursery, children's church, and youth services must be our priority. And the nursery must be well equipped with modern facilities. And those working with our children in our Sunday school classes should know that their ministry is really appreciated by God. Some of us when we were growing up, we couldn't wait for Sunday to come. To go to church. But have you realized that some of the challenges that we are facing, we started and the enemy capitalizes on it. Mark 10 and 14. I'll read a verse from here. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for such is the kingdom of God. Are we forbidding our kids? Maybe that's not the way you think about it. Maybe that's not the way you see it. Maybe that's not the way you, you, you have it on your mind. He said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Oh, the heart of children. I always say that children are the best to befriend. I remember in my early years when I, I used to go to the, the, the nursery. Every Sunday, this is not not in Canada, but back home. Every Sunday, when I finish ready to go to church, I'll pass through some of their homes. And sometimes I'll be going to church with about six kids and we'll be talking. And one thing I realized that when you offend kids, they can easily forgive you. You can see that with their siblings. Sometimes you can have two of them at home and they'll be fighting. And you warn them, don't touch it, don't touch, don't talk to him. Leave him alone. You stay at one place. But the moment you realize they are playing together, they're forgiving one another. They're so forgiving. Easily forgive. And kids can easily believe. Do you know that every child thinks that their parents are millionaires? They think they have money. They will not doubt if you tell a three-year-old that I'll buy you a car tomorrow, would they believe? Huh? 
They will because they know parents are, they are very rich. And they see parents are giants. Even some of us that are little, they, when they were small, they saw me as little. Now I look so little in their, pre- in their presence. They can easily believe. And kids are faith. If you have three months old child, then the child is hungry, and you take an empty spoon to go to the mouth, they'll still open their mouth, attempting to eat. That's why Jesus said we should be like them. They forgive so easily. They have faith to believe things. They can trust people. They can trust them. That's why he said, the kingdom of God is like a little child. Those who can easily accept God and trust God and believe in him. They have so much faith. They trust everyone. But there's one thing about kids. If you want to lead them, they will follow. It's like, it's like a stem of a tree. When it's soft and tender, you can turn it everywhere. But when the stem is hard, it's so difficult. That's the reason why if you don't train them to love God, to serve God, they become teenagers and there's nothing you can do to change them except God. But some of the mistakes that we do as parents, that we leave them until it comes to a time when they are not trainable. Some of the tears that parents go through could have been fixed before they went through that stage. The Bible says, verse 16, and he took them up in his arms and laid his hands on them and blessed them. There are three things Jesus did when he took the kids. The Bible says, when he took them in his arm, he, when he took them, he laid his hands on them and he blessed them. Jesus displayed a model for us on what parents or how parents will handle their children. He gave us a model. He showed us an example. What did he do? The Bible says he took them in his arm. When the disciples said they should not come near Christ and Jesus rebuked them, he took them in his arm. While the disciples pushed them away, he received them. If you want to raise a godly child or godly children, there is the need to take them. That there is the need to take them. The Bible says a wise man or woman builds his family on a solid foundation. So that when the rains descend, when flood comes and the wild wind blows, the family will still stand. There are a lot of rains out there, lots of strong winds out there, lots of currents blowing people away. But if you train them on the solid ground, you will have them safe in your home. Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he or she should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So leaving our kids at home and driving alone to church, it's not the right training. Jesus took them. He took them. It means he embraced them. Jesus took the children. It means he embraced them. When your child is being chased out there with situation that is a threat to them and to their spirit and to their well-being and they run home, do you embrace them? Do you embrace them? Sometimes the training that we got home, that is what the same training that we give to our kids. But remember that some of the things that these children know today, we were so ignorant of them. Do you embrace them? When they run to you, when there's something happening outside, that which threatens them, to their well-being and they run home. Do you embrace them when they are so weary and they are bruised and they are confused and they are afraid and they don't know what to do? 
and they think that this is my parent, this is my home, how do you handle them? Do you embrace them? You know, most of the time when they are hurting and they come, we also push them away with our words, with our frustration. Is it true or false? But the Bible said Jesus took them. It means that he received them. Do you receive your children when they need your love the most? Do you receive them when they leave your love the most? Jesus spent time with them. Do you spend time with your children? We live in a culture where everyone sees to invest in themselves. I'm going to school. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I've got to better myself. We live in a culture where everyone seems to invest in themselves. And they find no time for anybody except themselves. We are investing in ourselves. To some raising children is a pain. It's burdensome. It's expensive. It slows you down. That is why you didn't bring them. Because they're slowing you down. Mom and dad, if you desire to raise a godly child or godly children, there is the need to create a godly environment or atmosphere in your home. There's no shortcut in this. Remember that it is very easy for them to know God when they are young. And some of them are being on vacation. Even when they open the nursery, the kids are not there because let them stay home with their siblings. I'm busy. And we're talking about COVID. Adults and children who, was, who were more vulnerable to receive the, to catch their sickness. Adults or children. So why are they home? You see, the Bible says, let God be true and every man be a liar. If we say to God that the Bible says, train up the child the way he or she should go, and when they grow, they will not depart from it. And we say to God, we train them the way they should go, and still they are out there. Would that be true? There are a lot of mistakes that we do, and yet we put the blame on God. We are too busy. Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 7. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. He was ta- Joshua was talking to the people and said, These are the words which I command you today in your heart. You shall teach them diligently, not casually, not anyhow, not anyway, not when you feel. He said, you shall teach them diligently to your children. How many times do we sit them down and say, five minutes, we are having devotion. And sometimes we think that they won't hear. Do you know how long they sit behind the TV for hours without getting tired? When this program is over, click, they change to the next. You know sometimes they know which comes after who, which comes after who. But you think that five minutes will be too much for them. He said, you shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house. When you sit in your house. When you walk by the way. When you lie down, when you rise up, it means that consistently teach them the word. Consistently teach them the word. But you see, most of the time, we are so busy with every other thing except God and his word. We can take them to games. We can take them to the store. We can take them to the park. We can watch TV with them. We can do everything except the word. Busy. Busy. Busy with our businesses, busy with cooking, busy with cars, busy with that, busy with that. I remember the youth church was on Saturday. And we're literally begging parents, turn the stove off and bring your child to church. If mother is busy, what about dad? 
God gave us these children to populate heaven with them, not hell. And you don't want your seed to go to hell. God forbid. Because if you read the word, and to see your child in hell will be one of the most protected things on the face of the earth. And you going to heaven and your child screaming in hell. We were literally begging parents, bring them to the youth church. So that the word of God will be taught. I even said, have a carpool. So that this one will bring three kids for one month. I did everything. Parents were busy with everything except the well-being of their kids when it's come to spiritual things. We come to church and leave them home. We join online services, which is good. It's okay to join online. We leave them on the computer while we are listening to the word. And then they click and they go in and they go and they go that and they turn the mouse and they see things that you don't even know. But you realize that on the net, there's every evil thing on there. So once you are feeding your spirit with the word of God, the enemy is also feeding them. It is time to embrace and accept our God-given responsibility. Nobody said amen. I said it is time to embrace and accept our God-given responsibility. Hallelujah. Sometimes we cry to God, we pray to God, we want kids. But when God gives us the blessing, we shy away from our responsibility. The Bible says after he has received them, he laid his hands on them. It means Jesus endorsed them. He affirmed them. He encouraged them. He laid his hands on them. He endorsed them that I love you, you are mine. He affirmed them. He encouraged them. It was so encouraging for them to see Jesus laying his hands on them. The children were so fulfilled that the master sees them as so important. Lots of our children of today who have gone untouched by parents are on the street. You got no parent touch them. I'm not talking about just physical touching them, but you touch them, their lives. Most of kids that were not touched, most of kids that were untouched have found their way on the street. They are following friends who touch them, but in the wrong way. Who advise them, but in the wrong way. Because parents were too busy, no time. It takes time, it takes energy, it takes resources, and it takes the power of the word and prayer to raise a child. And of course, by setting a good example. Do you know that in, every, in the life of every child, there are windows at every stage? When they are born, the way you relate, you relate is not the same as when they are teenagers. When they are born and they are little and they are lying down their cribs, all they need is food, you change them and they sleep. That's all you need. Even if you talk to them, they will not be here. Sometimes they see you laughing and they also, they also smile. That's all it is. But from newborn to preschool, there's another window. Your involvement to preteen, another window. To teenagers, the another window. Even early stages of their 20th birthday, there's another window. And every window is so important that when you miss it, you can ruin the, the destiny of that child. If they are not well attended, it can mess up that child every stage of their lives. So you can't say that, oh, now my child go to school, is in grade three, so let me leave that child. I'll just come home, eat. oh yeah, go to bed. Every stage of their lives, there's a window 
for you to work on, to fulfill. If you, we tend to go through every window, we'll be here till tomorrow. But your God is faithful. And therefore, we've got to depend on God, apart from our own effort, to raise these children. Psalm 127, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it live in vain. Unless the Lord builds your home, unless the Lord builds your child, and therefore the involvement in the things of God is so important, but it will take you, the parents, to lead them. Don't let the only time you touch your child be when you are disciplining that child. Sometimes we don't do anything, we just leave them do their own thing, and then when they misbehave, that's the time we want to spank them. That should not be the only time you want to discipline your child. If you don't express that motherly or that fatherly care, assuring them that you are there for them, but not someone else, it will help them. If you don't assure them, if you don't bring them closer to you, somebody else will do it. And at the time, they get themselves in bad companies. If you don't touch them with your love, you make and make a positive mark on them. Somebody else will do it. If they don't receive your affirmation, if they don't receive your encouragement, if they don't receive your endorsement, the enemy will. The word will. If you're always saying that you are this, you are this, and somebody filled with demons say, oh, you are such a kind and a nice person, endorsing that person, they will tend to follow them. They will. The Bible says, when Jesus had received them and laid hands on them and touched them, he blessed them. Blessings always come with praise. It comes with honor protection. To bless comes with favor, mercy, and benefit. And we all attest to this. Whenever we are sharing the benediction, may the Lord favor you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord show his countenance upon you. May the Lord protect you. Is it not true? So the blessing that Jesus blessed them symbolizes that he was praising them, honoring them, protecting them. He was favoring them. He was showing mercy and, and all kinds of benefits on them. He was blessing them. It means that Jesus spoke well of the children. He did. He blessed them. When was the last time you spoke well of your child? When was the last time your child heard your voice? Saying that you did so well, I'm so proud of you. When was the last time? When they're going through challenges at school, how do you handle it? You say, Oh, you are not studying. Da, 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 da. How do you handle it? Even though you, you know that they're not doing well, but there's a way to go about it that will make them feel good and make them feel loved and make them know that indeed their parents are with us. Are you helping and answering some of the questionings on their mind? Remember, when they become adolescent, that is a critical stage in their life. Most of the time we say, oh, when they, the child become, became a teenager, he's stubborn. He's going through so much. He has so many questions on their mind. And he, he needs your encouragement, your counseling, your prayers, you befriending in order for you to, if you open up yourself to your child, there's nothing he will not tell you. But any little thing, you hear it, you are screaming, you are telling people, why wouldn't they avoid you? Do you cheer them up? Do you cheer your son up? Do you cheer your daughter up? Do you tell them that in God you'll be victorious? You are loved. The Lord is with you. Do you tell them, don't worry, I'll be praying. I remember when my kids were growing up, especially the girl, oh my. Anytime he's writing exams, mom, I'm writing exams at 2 o'clock on Thursday. And on that time, 
The moment is Thursday, 2 p.m., wherever I will, I'll be hiding somewhere, praying, bro, sakata, praying, Lord, give, give, give wisdom, give grace. And then as he, I'll ask her, when will you finish? Then the moment you finish, she'll call me, Mom, I, I, did, I did it. I, I, it was okay. And I said, praise God. Because he knows somebody will be there praying. How do we befriend our children? If they don't befriend you, they'll befriend somebody else. We encourage them, let's go to church. Remember God is supreme. He will help us overcome all your challenges. You are mad for a source. God loves you. God is with you. Do we take them out and discuss things with them? Let's discuss this over dinner. I want to take you out. All the challenges. It will be well. God is with you. Or do you speak to them in defeat? With your frustration and negative and strong words? You know, sometimes a woman will separate with the, with, with the husband. And any time he's angry with that ex, it goes on the child. Is that fair? What did the child do? What did the child do? Please learn to say good and kind words to your children. And this will make it easier when you need to correct them. Then they'll know you love them, but this time they've moved. And therefore they have to accept their mistake. You have to prophesy over them. Romans 4 and 17, call those things which do not exist as though they did. Who, contrary to hope, believed. There are power in our words. With their tongue. Blessing them. Encouraging them. Instructing them. Directing them. If they go the wrong way, you correct them nicely and kindly. Don't do this. It will not help you. You have to study. Where you are now, if you need help, I can get you somebody to tutor. These are the things we tell them. Not you failed all your exams. Look at you. You are all the friends. Does it help? It does not. We've got to look at the model of Christ. The way he accepted the kids. The way he took them in his arms. The way he laid his hands on them. The way he blessed them. So that our children will grow and love God and serve God and live for God. I pray that every child represented in this house, those online who are not even church members but have tuned in, God will change the lives of their children. But we, the parents, should make an effort that these children are the blessings that God has bestowed upon us. It's a joy to have them. God will not burden you, but we have taken a path that is causing the case. In the midst of this generation, there's still a way because God is God. And God will be able to help us to raise them up to serve him Especially when they're going through challenges, when they're going through difficulties, when they don't have hope anywhere but to the parents, so that God will anoint them. So parents, we have a great responsibility. God gave us children to raise them up to fear God. Let us walk in the light of the word so that they will